Hi everyone, let's measure heartbeat. We are going to do this with some simple hardware, no software required. The way we measure heartbeat is by shining infrared light through a finger. A infrared light has the highest penetration as compared to, for example, blue light, and this can be easily detected with a phototransistor in a similar way that your remote emits infrared light and there is a phototransistor in your TV to detect said light. We begin by limiting the current that is flowing through an infrared LED. Here we have plus 5 volts and resistor R1 is limiting the current so that we don't destroy our LED. The current, forward current is given by this equation where we have 5 volts, the forward voltage of the LED and the resistor. Here I'm using the reference design by analog devices and I will show you the modifications that I have done to it so that it works for me. So they recommend 7 milliamps, so 470 ohms, fine. Now we are detecting the infrared light with a phototransistor. Resistor R2 is very important because it sets the sensitivity. This is known as a common emitter amplifier. This works in such a way that when you shine light, light through this transistor, the, more, the higher the amount of light, the more current will flow through, and that will discharge capacitor C1. And we want a way to charge it back up again, so we put a resistor in there. Now, the more, smaller the resistor, the faster this capacitor is going to charge, and that means that the small fluctuations in the current caused by light are going to be negligible. So higher the resistor, R2, higher the sensitivity. They went with one kilo ohm. Okay, next. We want to remove the DC voltage because we want to measure only fluctuations. And this is sitting on top of a constant voltage. So we put capacitor C1 in there. And we want to amplify the signal because this is tiny. So we use an amplifier. Now, this is known as a trans impedance amplifier. It works in such a way that it takes a current that is flowing through C1 and gives you a voltage output. So from current to voltage, and the gain is minus R3, so minus 10 kilo ohms. The cutoff frequency, that means the frequency at w through which uh, signals can go through, is C1 1 divided by 2 pi C1 times R3. That gives us 0.7 Hertz. Because this is a high pass filter, that means that signals with frequencies higher than 0.3 Hertz will make it through. Talking of which, what kind of frequency are we dealing with? Well, a healthy heart beats for adults between 60 to 180 bits per minute that is 1 to 3 Hertz. So this is the frequency range that we are working with. Okay. Now all these triangles are the same operational amplifier, an OP484. And I have bypassed it with 100 nanofarad capacitor C2 and C3, and this is powered from plus minus 5 volts. Okay, let's move on. I have an active low pass filter. What does this mean? Well, we don't want signals with frequencies higher than 3 Hz, so we want to get rid of those. That is the purpose of capacitor C4. The cutoff frequency is 1 divided by 2 pi R4 and C4, which is 3.4 Hz. Signals with frequency higher than 3.4 Hz will be cut off. Now the problem with this arrangement is that if you load the filter, that means that the signal is going to, the amplitude is going to be, go down considerably because this cannot source much power. We solve this with this buffer. Buffer has a high input resistance, meaning a high input impedance. Therefore, it's not loading this filter very much. But the output is low impedance, meaning it can provide power. Therefore, the attenuation will be minimal. That's where the name active comes from. Moving on, let's look at the last stage. We want to further amplify the signal and filter it. To do so, we are using an integrator. So it's calculating the integral of the signal. Don't be scared by this. Basically, this is a low-pass filter. 
with a frequency given by 1 divided by c5 times r6 times 2 pi that is again 3.4 hertz we have an inverting amplifier with a gain of minus r6 divided by r5 that is minus 470 let's put everything together at the output we will have a voltage signal whose gain is the gain of the third stage times the second stage times the first first stage that is minus 10 kilo ohms times 1 times minus 470 4.7 mega ohms what does this mean it means that a current of one microampere produces 4.7 volts so we can measure really tiny currents here I will discuss now with you the tweaks I have done to the circuit and then we will go take a look at how I have built it I wanted more light shining from the LED so I have connected three R1s in parallel therefore the resistance is 470 divided by 3 21 milliamperes that is okay because the maximum that the LED can take is 100 milliamperes next to increase the sensitivity I have increased the value of R2 to 4.7 kilo ohms finally I have lowered the gain because it was saturating the signals were clipping the signals cannot swing beyond the voltage rails so R5 I made it 1 kilo ohm so I decreased the gain by 10 of the last stage as a result the total gain is 470 kilo ohms meaning that a 1 micron peer current will produce 470 millivolt signal now let's go take a look at the implementation here is the actual circuit the operational amplifiers are inside this package now we have the phototransistor the infrared led the around 2000 provides power and it measures the voltage output when i block the phototransistor with my finger I can measure a variation in the signal as we can see here but this is very fiddly because this is a breadboard the components are loose and it is very important to get proper alignment between the phototransistor and the LED after much fiddling squeezing my finger in between the infrared LED and phototransistor I managed to get this beautiful signal with a frequency of 1.171 Hz Multiplying that by 60 gives you the bits per minute, which is around 70. I think it's a little bit high because I was getting frustrated because of how fiddly this is, but hey, here we have a nice signal. I hope you have liked this video. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments down below. Until next time.